Back in 2021, I created my first two Lost Media related YouTube videos. As someone who has been creating YouTube videos for over 10 years now, these two videos in particular are some of my favorite videos that I have done thus far. I had so much fun working on those videos and I really, really enjoy Lost Media content. So I was glad that those videos have been successful and I really am so happy that so many of you enjoyed those two videos. Since then, I have been thinking about other ideas that I have to create more K-pop related Lost Media content. But here's the catch. I really wanted to discuss about more pieces of K-pop Lost Media that are not that common to both K-pop and Lost Media fans alike. I wanted to search for some of the most not known about pieces of Lost Media that I could find in relation to K-pop. And well, I did just that. Here are 10 pieces of obscure K-pop Lost Media. Back in 2016, there was a photo of Shiny that surfaced on the internet that no one knows the backstory behind. The photo in question shows that this photo was taken behind the scenes for some photo shoot of the members with a photographer. This photo was posted on an Instagram account of a person that went under the name Maxine Lee. SM Entertainment, the company that Shiny is under, has never mentioned or stated any information about the reasoning behind this photo shoot or why the photos have never been released to the public. Although this is technically not considered to be lost media, this is considered to be content that was not added onto all physical releases of home media. Welcome to the Shesh Key Slam was the second full length album released by Shesh Keys on November 1st, 1997. All four of the gate tracks in the outro for some reason was not included on the cassette tape version of the album. Yet these tracks are featured on the CD version as well as being on multiple streaming platforms such as Spotify. 24 years has passed since the release of this album and there has been no explanation as to why these five tracks were omitted from this version of Welcome to the Shushki Land. There has also been no findings of a cassette tape copy with these tracks added. The only information that is known about this cancelled comeback from Infinite is the trailer that was posted on the group's YouTube channel back in May of 2015. There was never any further information released from Woolham Entertainment, the company that Infinite is under, about this attempted comeback since the release of this video. Here's another piece of lost media from 2015. Project Film Dimension was a two minute video that featured a group's icon and winner back in September. This is the only piece of evidence that was released about this scrapped idea. This video was posted on YG Entertainment, the company that both groups are under, YouTube channel, and there has been no mention about this idea or plans about this project since. During their first Asian tour, into the New World, Girls' Generation performed their song Destiny, which was released on their self-titled album back in 2009. The song was only performed on the first stop of their tour, which was in Seoul, South Korea on December 19, 2009. There has been no audio or video recordings of this performance found, and it's not included on either the DVD or CD releases of this tour. If there is any K-pop act that I think that has the lowest loss content, it has to be 21. But out of a long list of cut content that 21 had in their only seven years of being active, this topic is one that most people seem to not talk about. And that reason being is that there is very little information on this topic. For what I can find about this unreleased album, it was not a full OT4 release in that it was planned to be released during the summer. The only source that I have for this entry is the Reddit post that I found this little bit of information on. Former Wonder Girls member and solo artist, Yubin, had a trailer for her unreleased song City Love posted on June 2nd, 2018. This 16 second video was released on the official JYP Entertainment Facebook page. Just like other entries that are on this list, this trailer is all that was released for this cancelled project. 
Yubin is no longer under JYP Entertainment as she left the company in January 2020, so there is a high possibility that this song will never be released. In March 2020, Promise 9 debut Japanese album Love Bomb was supposed to be released. The album was then postponed due to world events that took place during the time. There has been no information about this album's new release date since. On April 13th, 2017, the trailer for the music video for the song Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo by Very Good was uploaded on the official Wanda K YouTube channel. Then, the full music video was released only three days after the trailer on April 16th. The final music video's concept is very different in comparison to the trailer video, and there has been no information on if there is a music video for Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo with the concept of the original trailer. The last entry on this list is one that I'm not too sure on the status of availability, but I will share with you all what I have found on this topic so far. Heejun vs. Kingta Battle of the Century Pop vs. Rock was a TV series from 2002 which features members Kingta and Heejun from HOT. For what I can gather about this show, it was about both members giving advice and guidance for the trainees at SM Entertainment at the time. Some of the trainees that are featured on this show are well known in the Korean music industry today, such as former member of TVXQ, current member of JYJ and soloist Jungsoo, members of Super Junior and Hook and Sungmin, and members of K-Rock group track J, Miwoo, and Jungwoo. This show was set as an audition and for those that pass the audition stage will be paired up in teams by the two leaders and would challenge each other to be the winner. Also, the two groups would focus on two genres of music. Kingta's team was pop and Heejun's team was rock. This show had a bit of footage that is on YouTube as there's only four videos uploaded for a combined runtime of 17 minutes. But I did find an inactive track fan page on Tumblr because Tumblr, am I right? It found five links to the YouTube videos of the show. Unfortunately, all five of these videos are private. Now the question that I have is, do these private videos contain footage that is not available on the videos that are available to watch currently? on YouTube, or are these videos that are available are re-uploads of those private videos? This show does not have much information available online, which is why this last entry of the list is so long. And that is the end of 10 pieces of obscure K-pop lost media. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope that you all enjoyed the video. Links to all of the resources that I used in today's video will be linked down below. If you have any other information that is about the 10 topics that were discussed in today's video, feel free to comment down below. Or also, if you know any obscure pieces of K-pop lost media that you would like to share, comment down below as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see and talk to you on the next video. Take care.